Professor Orgelis here. We just created a URL. We loaded the URL, grabbed the JSON, and we parsed the JSON and put it into our model. Okay, so you can think of the New York Times manager as our model. Remember, for model view controller, the model is the data and the methods that manipulate the data, which is exactly what's happening here. This New York Times manager goes to the API, pulls the data, and stores it in a collection. And then the collection can be sorted. Okay, we can determine what data is stored. We can get the data. We can set the data. That's exactly what the model should do. Now the data is ready. We need to go back and get it in the controller. So with a lot of the applications, you're going to need to use the fire property change. We're not focusing on MVC here. Okay, we're going to focus on implementing APIs. But this application is really close to passing MVC. You may need to implement the fire property change, maybe some other parts of the MVC uh, challenge and the lecture that we went over, but it's really close to following MVC. So if we go back to the controller. Here we're loading the news. Once we load the news and everything's ready, it's going to be stored in the array list. Okay, so you see this New York Times news manager. Once it's done, all the news stories are going to be in this array list. So in the controller, you can comment this code back in. We commented it out earlier so we can run the code. You'll see it loops through all the stories and gets the headline. Well, we don't have stories yet. We need to write a few more lines of code. So after the, the news manager loads, once that's finished, we need to get that array list. So you'll see I have stories up at the top. And from the news manager, I can call the get news stories method. So if I go up to stories up at the top, you'll see stories is an array list of the New York Times news stories type, which is similar to what we had in the model. Now here I'm keeping a copy of the data in the controller. This is why in the previous video I said it almost meets the MVC architecture. You'll see here I'm keeping a copy of the data in the controller. Okay, what we should do is use the fire property change and send the data back through the property change listener. Okay, but I didn't want to focus on that part for the lecture. You'll see here I have an observable array list. This is okay to keep here. So we would use the fire property change, send the data back through the fire property change method, and then we would set the observable array list. The observable array list is a UI element. UI elements can stay here in the controller, but data should not be in the controller. Data should be in the model only. So you see here, I get the New York Times news stories, and we need to clear the news list items. Okay, the new list items we're going to do clear method. Now it's cool. You'll see here this news list items is actually the observable list. Okay, it's an FX collections. So it's an observable array list, meaning you can actually see it. But what's cool about it is it has pretty much all the same methods as an array list. So it has the clear and has the add method. And that's exactly what we're using here. So we're going to get all the New York Times stories. We're going to clear the old ones out. And then we're going to use a for loop. We're going to iterate through all the stories and we're going to add them to the observable array list. Following proper programming techniques, this will be done in the property change listener. Okay, so there's a change method. And that's where this would be done. And you'll see here I have a news list view. Okay, so if I scroll up, I have a list view, which is an FXML element. And the list view, we're going to set it with the observable array list. Okay, so I'm going to add all the stories to the observable array list. And I'm going to set the list view. Once the list view is set, this is important. This is a user experience, just like I was talking back in the object serialization lecture. Make sure you focus on user experience when building your final project. And here's a good example. So if the stories, you'll see stories here is from the model. If the size of it is greater than zero, what are we going to do? 
meaning you have at least one story. First, we're going to select that story. So you'll see I have a list view. You'll see I can get the selection model. I'm going to select the first element. So it's actually going to load the story for them. This is the part that I'm talking about default data. Try to make the TAs work as little as possible. So for example, on my app, I'm going to load University of Missouri for them automatically when they run the app. And not only am I going to load that for them, I'm going to select the first story for them. I'm also going to move the focus up to the first element. And I'm going to scroll to the top. If I open up the view, I have a list view here. Let's say I have 100 items. And let's say on the previous one, they scrolled all the way down to the bottom. Now I type in a new search criteria. I click go. The list view is still going to be scrolled to the bottom. But I just searched a new element. That's a bad user experience if they have to scroll to the top themselves manually. So every time they do a new search, I'm going to go up. I'm going to select the first one. I'm going to scroll this thing back to the top. I'm also going to put focus to the first element. Okay, so this is a good user experience. I'm writing code to make their life easier. That way they don't have to do it themselves manually. Okay, so you see the above is used to tell the list view to select, focus, and scroll to the first item, which will cause the listener to treat this item as being selected. Okay, it will treat this item as being selected. You'll see below is the way I could just tell the web views engine to display the first story, which I don't need to if the listener on the list view is told the first item is selected. So this is what I had to do before. I wanted to load the first news story for them automatically. So I told the web engine to load the first story. But when I call the select method, it's like clicking on it. And when I click on it, it actually loads the first news story. Okay, I'm going to show you where this happens in the next video. So stick with Professor Wergelis, and we'll see you in the next video.